Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Stories with Sunny. Here, I'm going to take my sign down real quick. It's, we're live and we're here. If anybody is listening, if you could give me a thumbs up or, or send me a quick message if you can hear me better than last week. Um, I'm not quite sure what happened. The audio was so awful. So we're going to reread the books from last week um, so that the kiddos who requested them get a chance, get a chance to hear them today. So let's see. Anybody out there want to let me know if you can hear me better this week? Anybody? I don't know. Maybe we'll just hope for the best. Let's see. Okay, so I guess we're just going to get going and, and we're going to hope that the, uh, the audio is a little bit better. Our first book this week is for a friend of mine here in Rock Springs. Her name is Ruth. And she loves Mo Willems books. She said she didn't care which book it was as long as it was Mo Willems. Okay, let's see. I'm getting a message. Mike says the audio is better. So we're going to go for it, guys. Thanks, Mike. Um, so a couple weeks ago, a couple, three weeks ago now, we did a book on dinosaurs. And I taught everybody how to say dinosaur. Do you guys remember how to do that? Take your fist and you walk it. Can we say dinosaur? And because we're going to read another book about a dinosaur today. It's called Edwina, the dinosaur who didn't know she was extinct. So let's get started. Maybe. Everyone in town knew Edwina. She was the dinosaur who played with the neighborhood kids. She was the dinosaur who did favors for anyone who asked. Edwina helped the little ladies cross the street. She baked chocolate chip cookies for everyone. Everyone believed in Edwina, except Reginald Vaughn Hooby Dooby. Reginald knew just about everything about just about everything. He liked to give reports in class about all the things he knew. Today, he was going to talk about things that are extinct, specifically dinosaurs. Extinct means doesn't exist anymore. It means they've, they've died out and they're never coming back. But as soon as Reginald started, Beth McFeeder asked, what about Edwina? She's a dinosaur. Then Tommy Birchill said, yeah, Edwina can't be extinct. She bakes chocolate chip cookies for us. And then Ms. Mink added, maybe Edwina is baking chocolate chip cookies right now. Before he knew it, everyone except Reginald was outside eating cookies. No one listens to me with that dinosaur around, thought Reginald. Well, tomorrow I'll prove to the whole world that dinosaurs really are extinct and Edwina will disappear. If you had a dinosaur that baked chocolate chip cookies in your town, would you want it to disappear? I don't think I would. The next morning, Reginald handed out flyers that made excellent arguments about how extinct dinosaurs are. They also made really excellent hats. When the flyers didn't work, Reginald tried protesting. When protesting didn't work, well, he tried everything he could think of. But no one listened. Finally, Reginald broke down and cried. Boo-hoo, he sobbed. Why won't anyone listen to me? I'll listen to you, said a voice from behind him. Miss Edwina, huh? Reginald took Edwina to his classroom. Inside, Edwina listened as Reginald told her the truth about dinosaurs. He was persuasive. He was expressive. He was loud. He was very convincing. Edwina was shocked. When he was done, Reginald felt fantastic. No one had ever listened to him so well for so long. Everything Reginald had said made sense. There was no doubt about it in Edwina's mind. She knew she was extinct. She just didn't care. And by then, neither 
did Reginald von Hooby Dooby. Here we go. The end. So what do you guys think? If we had a dinosaur here in Rock Springs that did nothing but help little old ladies cross the street and play with you on playgrounds and bake cookies, would you wanna would you wanna keep it around? I would wanna keep it around. Oh, let's see. Hey, Phil. Well, even though Miss Claire is a sleep teller that I said hi, and you have got perfect timing because our next book is for Miss Claire. So I've got a friend, I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, from Hoquam, Washington, Washington State. And she is just an itty bitty tiny little thing yet. Her name is Claire, and she likes unicorns. I brought my unicorn up here with me today. So I thought I would read her a book called Not Quite Narwhal. A narwhal with me today, too because I kind of feel like narwhals are just the unicorns of the ocean. Plus it's a really fun book. So once Miss Claire wakes up, hopefully she'll enjoy listening to it too. Everybody take your two fingers for me and cross them. You're gonna put them right here on your forehead and lift it straight up like a unicorn horn. And that's how we say unicorn in American Sign Language. So we're gonna read a book about a unicorn today. Not quite narwhal. Let me scoot in a little bit so you can see the pictures better. Kelp was born deep in the ocean. He knew early on that he was different from the other narwhals. His tusk wasn't as long as everyone else's. He had different tastes in food and he wasn't a very good swimmer. But his friends didn't seem to mind, so Kelp didn't mind either. That is, until he was swept away by a strong current. He says, oh, I wish I were a better swimmer. Kelp found himself at the surface, closer to land than he had ever been before. High up on the cliff, he spotted a mysterious, sparkling creature. It looked so familiar. It looked like Kelp. Kelp swam toward land as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that he could catch up with the creature that looked just like him. When he finally reached the shore, Kelp felt a little bit anxious. He'd never left the ocean. He was nervous about walking for the first time, but the land creatures, they made it look really easy. It wasn't. He eventually after following what the turtle got the hang of it. Everything on land was strange and beautiful. Kelp began to think he might never find the creature that looked just like him. But as he stumbled out of the forest, land narwhals uh, actually were unicorns. And by the looks of it, so were you. Kelp had never heard of unicorns before. They taught him all sorts of new things about his tusk. We call them horns. They introduced him to delicious unicorn food and they showed him how to gallop. There was no doubt about it. Kelp was, in fact, a unicorn. He was having so much fun that he didn't want to leave. But then he remembered all his friends under the sea. Kelp missed them terribly. So he said goodbye to the unicorns and returned to the ocean. Kelp swam towards home as fast as he could, which wasn't very fast at all, hoping that the narwhals would still like him now that he was a unicorn. When he finally arrived, Kelp had butterflies in his stomach. They said, Kelp, welcome home. Kelp took a deep breath and told his friends the news. It turns out I'm not a narwhal. Of course you're not. I'm a unicorn. We all knew that. They took it quite well. Kelp was happy to be home, but now that he'd experienced life on land with the unicorns, he couldn't seem to forget them. Did he want to be a land narwhal with the unicorns or a sea unicorn with the narwhals? Kelp couldn't decide. But then he realized that maybe, just maybe, 
he didn't have to choose. I see the narwhals and the unicorns playing together. If you could be either a narwhal or a unicorn, which one would you want to be? I think I would want to be a narwhal because I really like the water and swimming and being in the ocean. Be a lot of fun to be either one, I bet. Okay, guys, our last book of the day. Why don't you take your thumb and your pointer finger and your pinky. We're going to make the sign for I love you in American Sign Language. So we make that and we're going to turn it kind of like this and we're going to zoom it around all over the place. That's how we say fly. You guys make your hands fly. We're going to read a book for a couple of my buddies over in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania. So we hit kind of both the, the coasts today. Um, my friend Juniper and my buddy Walter, they love a book called Cordelia. And I love a book called Cordelia too. I'm really glad that they requested it. I had forgotten all about this book. I used to read it to my daughter all the time. So I hope you guys really enjoy this one. Cordelia. I love her hair. I love her little puffies. Okay. Cordelia could fly along with the breeze. What seemed impossible, she did with ease. The deeper her courage and confidence grew, the higher she went, the higher she flew. From the top of her head to the tips of her toes, the more she believed, the more that she rose. Cordelia could fly. She always just knew this faith in herself was how it was true. When she trusted her heart and trusted it whole, she could sing with the birds, songs filling her soul. From up overhead, the earth sparkled and gleamed, a world filled with friends, with magic, with dreams. Up in the sky, she would make the moon smile, dance with the stars, and laugh all the while. Cordelia's world was vivid, colored and bright. Joy filled her days, beauty filled her nights. Her happiness was endless, her delight only grew, until the day others doubted she flew. They didn't see her sing and play, they didn't see her fly. No one would believe her. They didn't even try. She used lots of ways, as many as she could find, to explain what was possible, but no one changed their mind. No one seemed to listen and no one seemed to care when Cordelia explained how she flew in the air. They said that she was silly. They said that she was wrong. They made Cordelia doubt who she'd been all along. As their words filled her head, her heart began to sink. Does who you are depend on what other people think? So Cordelia stopped doing the thing that she loved, the thing that made her happy, that made her who she was. She didn't fly and sing with the birds in the trees, no twirling, spinning, smiling, no gliding on the breeze. She didn't wish good morning to the whale in salty air as the sun warmed her skin and the wind blew her hair. She didn't visit the moon to try to make him grin or play games with the stars, seeing who would win. Cordelia began to walk in an ordinary way like everybody else on an ordinary day. As the days passed, Cordelia stayed on the ground. Life became gray. There was no color, no sound. She missed the stars and moon. She missed the bird's sweet song. She missed the mighty whale. Everything was wrong. As she thought about her friends, her sadness became anger. She was mad at herself for letting other people change her. Who was anyone to say if she could or couldn't fly? what was or wasn't possible if they didn't even try. With confidence and strength, Cordelia began anew. She was the girl who could fly, and she knew that this was true. As Cordelia ran along, she, the feeling began to start. It was a soothing of her soul, a healing in her heart. She remembered who she was and that she loved to fly. 
as the doubts of others fell away, she rose into the sky. Cordelia began to fly again, to sing and play and soar, because what others thought didn't matter anymore. She knew just who she was, knew who she could be. This belief in herself, it set Cordelia free. Just because another can't see the world like you doesn't make things impossible or mean they are not true. All right, so thank you to Juniper and Walter for recommending that book. I think it's a really fun book with a really kind of important message. You gotta be true to yourself. Doesn't matter what other people think, right? Okay, guys, so that's it for this particular Friday Stories with Sunny. Make sure you tune in at two o'clock today. Mr. Aaron's gonna be reading some more to us. Next Monday and Wednesday, we've got Miss Becky with Toddler Time and Story Time. We've got a brand new Create with Constance next week. Did you guys do the Harry Potter drawings yesterday? Daisy and I are going to do them today after I get home. I'm pretty excited for it. And then I will be here next Friday with another Stories of Sunny. If you've got any more book requests, make sure to uh, send them to me either um, on this link here or you can message them to me privately, whatever works best. So you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on the other side.